Good afternoon. Surely the Lord is in our midst. As we enter his presence, let us keep our ears open and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Today's call to worship comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verses 10 to 12. Our days may come to 70 years, or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom.
let us all say a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, we just want to thank you for this day you have given us. Um, during these challenging times, Lord, um, we just want to continue to express our thanks for helping us find a way to worship you, O Lord. Even though it may not be in our usual church building, O Lord, um, thank you for just giving us the time and wisdom to worship you through this method, O Lord. We pray for the recent spikes in the COVID-19 cases, O Lord. We pray that you're with all these people who need you, O Lord. We pray that you'll heal those who are sick and help keep the people that have recovered healthy, O Lord. And also we want to just take this short time to apologize for any wrongdoings you've committed towards against you. All the things that we've said, all our actions, anything else that we regret doing that may have upset you, O Lord, we just pray that you'll just forgive us of those. And again, O Lord, just continue to keep us safe and continue to keep us healthy. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. I invite you to stand and together let's offer our songs of praise.
where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. Oh, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way. New day, he will make a way. He will make a way by a roadway in the wilderness. He'll lead me, rivers in the desert will I see. Good afternoon po, Pasadena Yem Leaf Church. Kamusta po kayong lahat diyan? I'm so thankful and grateful na makasama po kayong muli sa ating Sunday worship this afternoon. And uh, this is a good opportunity to thank you rin po for your uh, love gift to us as a family. Uh, sa Last Workers Appreciation Sunday. Thank you po. And uh, naway pagpalaan pa po kayong ng marami ng Panginoon. Uh, for our team this afternoon, we are going to study from the book of Matthew chapter 
verses 14 to 30. At uh, yung passage na yan ay isa pong parable. And we are using, uh, if you will notice, we are using a continuous study from the book of Matthew because we're using a liturgical calendar where all Christians are uh, using as well uh, from around the world. So yan po. We are in a stewardship team this uh, afternoon and uh, ang team po natin ay where are your talents? Yan. Ano, nasan po ang inyong talento? And uh, the parable of the talents is uh, telling us how we use them. Uh, pagka hindi po natin siya ginamit, ay talaga pong hindi, hindi tayo magagamit ang Panginoon in terms of yung mga uh, talents na ibinibigay natin sa Kanya, hindi natin na-utilize. Ano? So we have to use our talents. So are we a good steward of God's talent? Very important po na ginagamit natin yung mga talento natin. Otherwise, ay mawawala ito. Yung mga gift of singing, uh, gift of uh, dancing. Sometimes yung pagsayaw ay talagang gift din yan. No? And uh, we're going to watch a video uh, that will uh, tell us the story of the parable of the talents. This is a, just a short video. Jesus told a parable about a wealthy man who was leaving on a long journey. Before leaving, he met with his three servants and instructed them to take care of business while he was away. He entrusted the first servant with five talents, the second with two, and the third with one. The man was placing great trust in these three servants, since a talent was worth at least $15,000 he was putting something like $120,000 in their hands, which in today's terms would be millions of dollars. He instructed them to invest the money wisely. When the wealthy man returned home several months later, his servants were called in to give an accounting of their investments. The first servant did very well. He invested the five he had been given and made five in profit, so he handed over 10 talents to his master. The second servant had been given two, but he too doubled his master's money and handed over four talents. The master praised and thanked these two wise and industrious servants. Then the third servant timidly approached the master and handed over the same one talent he had been given. What's this? The master demanded. I gave you one talent and you give me one in return? That's it? The servant replied, well, sir, I was afraid you would be angry if I failed and lost the money, so I did the safe thing. I buried it in a field so I could return it to you now, safe and sound. The master was not pleased. He said, you could have at least put it in the bank and earned a little interest, but I guess you couldn't be bothered. Then he dismissed that servant. The point here is that God has given each of us various amounts of talents, that is, various gifts and abilities. Our talents might be athletic or artistic or intellectual. You might have leadership qualities or people skills or be a good organizer or even a natural born teacher. You might find joy working with children or with the elderly. The list of gifts and talents is a long one. Jesus is telling us that the master, God that is, expects us to use whatever talents we have been given to serve him to serve God. Some of us are very talented. We're like that first servant who received the five talents. And some may be somewhat less talented, more like the servants who received two or even one talent. God doesn't expect us all to produce like the first servant, to produce 10. No, God simply asks us to take what we have been given and to use it well. Take note of the second point here in this parable. God gives each of us various gifts and talents, not just so we can enrich ourselves, but so we can enrich the lives of those around us. Remember, 
whatever we do for even the least, we do for God. We serve God first and foremost by serving God's children, God's sons and daughters, and by caring for God's creation. Okay, so that's from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. And uh, that's a uh, wonderful telling of the uh, story of the uh, servants, no? Jesus told a parable about a wealthy man who Panginoon and uh, the other two were able to uh, give back to their master uh, twice nung pinagkaloob uh, sa kanila. And then there's this one na hindi na ibalik yung um, ina-expect ng uh, kanyang uh, master. No? So before we dwell on that particular team, let's talk about stewardship. Yan. Uh, what is stewardship? So stewardship is the management of another person's property, finances, or household affairs. As far as Christians are concerned, Stewardship involves the responsibility of managing God's work through the church. God has appointed all Christians to be his stewards on earth. Stewardship is not an option. As Paul points out about his own uh, call, being a steward is a necessary part of believing the gospel, even if it involves sacrificing personal rewards. As the parable of the talents uh, shows, Christians will be held accountable for the way in which they manage God's affairs as stewards. These matters include extending the church ministry through the preaching of the gospel, and that's in uh, Colossians 1, 24, 28, supporting the church financially and ministering to the sick and needy. Now, there's a particular word that I would like you to notice in this uh, in this text, no? And according to Lexham Theological Workbook, it's the word paradidomi, to hand over, entrust, or commit. So that's the exact word that was used, paradidomi to entrust teaching, doctrine, or tradition to someone. This word literally means to hand over, and it often has negative connotations of handing someone over to authorities or punishment. That's in Matthew 2019. However, it, did, it can also have positive connotations of handing something over to someone for safekeeping safekeeping, in effect, entrusting something to someone. It appears in this sense in the parable of the talents, which is the master handed over paradidomi, his property, to his servants. In Paul's letters, it is sometimes used of entrusting doctrine to people. And uh, twice, Paul writes that he entrusted paradidomi to the Corinthian believers things that were taught to him. That's in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 15-3. Jude 3 similarly refers to the faith delivered, paradidomi, once and for all to the saints. So let's look at different kinds of stewards. No? In the Bible, and uh, But before we look into it, let's see how stewards are set in our own Filipino culture back in the day. There are two kinds of stewards in our Philippine context. Ito yung aliping sagigilid, which is uh, owned by his master and has no rights to own anything. Ang aliping sagigilid ay isang alipin o tao na walang anumang ari-arian at nakatira sa tahanan ng mismong maharlika o timawang kanyang pinaglilingkuran dahil siyang 
tinuring ding pag-aari ng kanyang mga Panginoon. The story of Joseph in the Bible began when he works for Potiphar and has no right to own anything as he was a slave owned by Potiphar. Ang aliping na mamahay naman is considered katiwala and this is nearer to the context of paradidomi context no ang aliping na mamahay naman ay ang mas mataas na uri ng alipin kaysa sa aliping sa gigilid sapagkat siya ay may sariling pamamahay at ari-arian this kind of steward can go home and can own something for himself but he is still under obligation to work for his master so he is higher than the aliping sa gigilid no as stewards of god's resources the careful use control and management of the possessions of another that have been entrusted to one. The term steward is also used to refer to the responsible use of wealth and possessions by Christians. So let's look at three individuals who are, at, who are stewards of God in the Bible. So individuals acting as stewards. No? I will... I think I, I will send you a handout. So use your handout to write down uh, notes and yung answers. So uh, please do so. Feel free po to write your uh, notes there. So first is uh, Adam in the Garden of Eden. No? In Genesis 2.15, It says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So Adam is the first created be being and was given the task to care for the garden of Eden. Another is Joseph in uh, Potiphar's ha household. No? Uh, yun nga, nabanggit ko na po ito. And in Genesis 39, 4-6, ay sinabi, Dito. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge And because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. So Joseph was sold to Egyptian merchants as a slave to Egypt before he was bought by Potiphar. He has nothing but God who blesses him while he was working as a slave in Potiphar's household. Another example is Daniel as administrator in Babylon. In uh, Daniel 6, 1 to 3, and it says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be, to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three high officials of whom Daniel was one, to whom these uh, satraps should give account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So Daniel was another example of a young man, young man who was bought, brought to Babylon because Nebuchadnezzar just won the war and young Israelite men were given responsibilities To work at the palace. Now, if there are individuals working as stewards for God, there are also groups of people acting as stewards for the Lord. So, groups acting as stewards. First, the priests were uh, serving in the tabernacle. In Leviticus 22:9, it says, They shall therefore keep my charge lest they bear sin for it and die thereby when they profane it. I am the Lord who sanctifies them. So this is a very big responsibility. And the 
if they committed something wrong in terms of the way they do things in the worshiping the Lord or by profanity, eh, malaki yung uh, punishment. It will cost them their life. In 1 Samuel 2.15, it says, Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. So that is an example of one of the uh, rules of sacrifice to the Lord. They will not, they would not boil it, no? It has to be raw. Another type of uh, yung group na stewards are the seven chosen by the Jerusalem church. In Acts 6, 1 to 6, and I will read, Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because of their widows, who were being neglected in the daily distribution, and the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven of men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they, what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. So that's a big group of people who are in charge of serving uh, the food for the first or the early Christians. And there are also household stewards. Uh, there, these household stewards are found in the um, Old Testament. In Genesis 43, verse 16, it says, When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. So Joseph was instructing his steward of his house to slaughter an animal. No? Another is in Genesis 44, 1 to 12. And this is also an instruction made by Joseph to his stewards on what to do with uh, his brother's uh, sack. So they filled the sack of, uh, of his brothers with uh, his silver cup so that he could get the youngest, which is Benjamin. So please read the following verses from 1 to 12. And you will notice what a wonderful story Joseph had of um, uh, instructing the stewards on what to say, probably what to say when they tried to catch up with the group of Hebrews going back to their father. So these are Joseph's stewards, no? And when he was already governor of Egypt, another is also but is also a, a steward, but a treacherous steward of Saul named Ziba. Ziba, a servant of Saul's house, who later worked with King David. And uh, Ziba became a treacherous character, falsely accusing his master, Mephibosheth, of acting subversively regarding David's claim to the throne. Uh, this is a a character that we need to study. Kasi si Ziba is both a slave of King Saul who worked later with King David and then he accused 
he's a uh, master Mepi Bochet, who, who is a son of King Saul, no? Na inakus niyan of subversing yung claim ni Mepi Bochet of his claim to the throne. So, medyo medyo problematic to para sa haring si David because of course uh, when you talk about the lineage of King Saul may mga claim yang family na yan in terms of the rulership of his kingdom so si Ziba talagang uh, parang namamangkas sa dalawang ilog no and there's uh, also Jesus Christ teaching on stewardship and the way he do it is using parables to emphasize accountability uh, and this is another example na ating pinag-aaralan itong parable na ito sa Luke 16 verses 1 to 12 was also a story about the unjust steward. This is something that we can also study about how this uh, uh, this steward, this slave, dig to hid that uh, talent. Parehas na parehas po yung story. And uh, Luke written the same story. Of course, there is some somewhat differences that we can check on to and that's uh, something we can learn from in parable ni Jesus Christ we also Jesus Christ also emphasized individual's responsibility just like in Luke 12:48 sabirito but the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. So the more you have talents, the more you need to use it. No? Important na gamitin natin ito dahil marami binigay sa iyo ang Panginoon to use that talent. So the apostles continued this teaching. So Romans 14, 12, it says, So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. So kailangan nating malaman na we are accountable in using them. At uh, lalo na kung meron tayong gift of singing, kumanta tayo. If we have a gift of uh, in affirming encouragement to our brothers and sisters let's do that no encourage natin yung mga uh, kapatid natin lalo na ngayon in times of this pandemic na maraming na depress so that's a wonderful gift na dapat nating uh, gamitin so to be a good steward is an honorable thing in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, it says, For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also a great confidence in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. Christians are entrusted with the stewardship of the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, Sabirito, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and as stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. Christians are to be wise stewards of their God-given gifts. And this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. They are to use their gifts to benefit others. And that is in 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11. And they are also uh, there to develop their gifts. And that is in First Timothy verses uh, 4, 14 to 15. 
They are also to care for their bodies. No, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. Very important, no? Na if we are given talent and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, our bodies is His temple. It, it is where He dwells. Of course, there are times that we have to be careful when it comes to uh, yung ating purity in terms of lalo sa mga singles, no? We have to pray to God that He will keep us pure for the right person and yung ating uh, uh, bodies are the temple of God. We have to uh, take care of it and in when it comes to preserving our health, kailangan, syempre, minum tayo ng tubig, minum tayo ng vitamins, so that to keep our bodies healthy. Believers are to be wise stewards of their material possessions. Sa Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, no? sabi rito, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So uh, that's about uh, how we handle material possessions. It's not that we have to give everything to the poor. We also have responsibilities with our families. No, It's just that we have to, if you have a bulk of material possessions that we have, Try to give and share it to those who are in need. So, sa Acts chapter 4 verses 32 to 35, I nandun yung a verse on how the first Christians share their possessions. The Apostle Paul's teaching on sharing possessions are also in the book of Acts, verses 20 to 35. So, uh, as I close my message about stewardship, let us understand what it means to be a good steward in this point in time na mayroong pandemic. Um, ano yung pwede nating magamit para sa kapurihan ng Panginoon? And some people are saying, oh, the church is uh, parang hindi na sila na feel ng mga tao. What's the use of the church? This is the perfect time, opportunity to uh, be used by God with the use of our talents to tell them that there is hope in this life. Lalo na ngayon yung mga mentally depressed no yung depression is not a joke actually and some people are saying ah <laughs> too bad you're depressed no let's not make fun of it as christians we have to show our care to them and though sometimes wala tayong gift of siguro yung gift na discernment na discern natin na ay kailangan pala ng prayer si tong tao to Let's pray to God. No? Let's pray na bigyan tayo ng gift of discernment para makita natin kung sino yung mga kapatid natin na nangangailangan ng panlangin. And because of that, ay magagamit tayo ng Panginoon with the use of our talents and we are just in answer na doon, am I a good steward? Then we can say yes, that we are a good steward. And for that po, thank you po uh, Pasadena Yemelif Church for your time and I pray po na maging makabuluhan ng ating pong uh, worship this afternoon. God bless po and may you have a wonderful Sunday today.
Today's sending forth can be found in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful afternoon, for reminding us how to be a good steward. Uh, mul multiply our talents, Panginoon. Use us. And uh, may we be a vessel of your blessing sa aming mga kapatid na, who needs encouragement. So for this afternoon, we thank you. We praise you for this opportunity to be called your, your servant. And uh, may you guide us as we continue with our walk with you, as we cultivate our personal relationship with you as your children and uh, as we end our worship may your blessing be felt through the power of the holy spirit now to him who is able to keep him from falling to present you without fault and with great joy to the only god our savior jesus christ be glory majesty dominion and and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless Paul Pasadena.